Hello, friends. My name is Amy, and I am going to be leading you through some of my Sonet software basic training today. We're going to try to keep things pretty entry level. Um, however, if you have questions that uh, may seem a little bit off topic or um, maybe advanced, go ahead, ask them anyway. If I can answer them right here and now without derailing from like my lesson plan too much, I'm, I will. But if I feel like something is going to be uh, too detailed to get into, I'll just come back and answer directly in the comments after this is over. We want you to ask, ask your questions because we're always interested in discovering different topics that you might want to learn more about that could potentially be a, a MySonet Live later on. So go ahead and ask your questions. Meredith and Ryan are in the background today, sending those over to me and uh, double checking. There is not going to be any spam coming our way. So um, we are going to start today. Um, this is for you if um, you are new to my Sonet, or you might have had an older or different version of software, and you're feeling my Sonet curious, or um, you've had your software for a while, you need a refresher on some basics. Um, we're going to kind of get into just that basic stuff that is going to help you when you're learning more. You got a good foundation to work with here. So I'm going to assume that everyone has their software downloaded onto their computer and installed, and that you have also downloaded and installed your sample uh, files. Uh, it's good to have those. There's a lot of great stuff in those files. So if you need help with that, uh, Meredith and I did a MySonet 101 back in the fall. I think it was October. Uh, it's a good resource for downloading, installing, anything that you might need help with that. Okay, I am going to switch over to my screen here. Okay, I may be a disembodied voice for part of this, um, just so you can see my screen a little bit better. So when you open up your software, this is the first thing that you are going to see. Now, I am working in Platinum today but we are only going to be using blank canvas, which is what you will see if you have silver. Everything I'm gonna to do today can be done in the silver version of the software and up. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a blank canvas because that is usually where I start. So the first thing that you are going to see when you open up this uh, blank canvas is your hoop selection screen here. So you have a couple of different ways that you can choose a hoop. You can choose a universal hoop. So universal hoops is just one of the groups and it's going to bring you in just common hoop sizes. So you can start from there. If you have a specific brand of machine and model of that machine, you can fix that. Um, you can make that is your choice. Obviously, you can see there are a whole lot here. Um, you can also choose as one of your groups, we go up a little bit here, my hoops. So there is a way here that you can just enter in the hoops that you specifically own, which is a really great way to know that you're designing in something that you're going to actually stitch out in rather than have to worry about ch making changes for that later. So in order to get uh, one of the hoops chosen as a hoop you own, let's just go, go here. And so say I want to use, I just bought the 40 millimeter round spring hoop. I can just click include it in my hoops. And then if I go back up to my hoops, that hoop is now in here. So this is great if you own more than one brand of embroidery machine and you wanna keep a selection of the different hoops that you own for those machines, set them up in the, a My Hoop group here. You can also then choose if you wanna have your orientation natural, meaning straight up and down when you look at it in when it's attached to your machine, that's how it looks, or if you wanna have it rotated because you're gonna be looking at it sideways. You can also enter a specific hoop size. Say, so, you know, I don't really wanna go through that whole list of hoops. I just want to know that I've got a five inch by seven inch hoop and that's when I want to put it in here. Now, everything I have set to show all of my measurements in millimeters, 
you can actually change that um, to show all your measurements in inches. But if you want to just put in, I've got a five inch hoop, you can just type in five with your quotation marks. Do not hit enter yet. And then hit seven in your quotation marks and you have got a five by seven hoop. It's just translated it into millimeters for you. I, however, am going to be working just in a 150 by 150 square hoop. So once you have chosen your hoop, hit OK. And that hoop is now on your canvas. Oh, I see a question here. How did you get to this screen? As my screen for my Sonet doesn't have this screen. So this is the screen as soon as you open it up. Um, so I'm going to just slide this over for a second. So once you click on your My Sonet icon here that's on your desktop once you have it installed get this back here and you open it up you click on it you're going to get this that says blank canvas on here so once you choose that blank canvas that's where this comes up so i'm not sure hopefully that answers that um so if it didn't We'll go on here and you'll let me know. Um, so what I want to show you now is just so you can change the look of your canvas. We're going to go up here to the top of the screen where it says view. And I'm going to click on that. And you can see here you've got another place to change the size of your hoop. And you have over here the option to show the grid or take the grid off. So that may be what you were asking about in that question. You may not have the grid. So if you go over to the view, you can hit show grid. You can also change the size of your grid. So your default is 10 millimeters. If you want to work in inches, again, you can just put, I want all of my grid sizes to be one inch square. And there you go. It is set as one inch. Now, if I hit enter, it's going to change it to 25 millimeters because 25.4 millimeters is an inch but I'm gonna keep mine with the default. So I just wanted to show you that. So you can go ahead and switch that around, whatever is comfortable for you when you're designing. So, you know, if you're working on a t-shirt or something and you know that you've got two, a two inch square of space to work in, go ahead and change your grid to one inch grids. And that way you'll know for sure that what you're designing is in fact going to fit there. Okay. so. Um, that is just a little bit of the view tab and we'll go in there a little bit later as well. So I want to now show you here up at the top of your home screen here is the quick access toolbar is what that is called. So I'm going to just go over this quickly right now, but we will be using this as we go through today. So up in the top left here is your insert icon. So it looks like a little piece of paper with an arrow going down in here. You have next to it a little floppy disk that is save. And then you have a floppy disk with a pencil that is save as. We also have export, print, yet another place to change the hoop size, undo and redo. And then we have life view and design player. So these are just little icons that you use frequently when you are working. And that way you don't always have to hop back to the home screen or go to the file menu when you need to do any of these things. They're right up there, tools that you can use um, whenever or wherever you are in the software. Is there a way to have a ruler show while you're working on an embroidery? Mm, not to my knowledge. In the view tab, you've got a get length um, icon here, but really what that's going to do is just measure a distance for you. So it's not really the same as having a ruler. So as far as I know, no, there is no little ruler icon that you can have next to this. So that's why, again, if you are accustomed to working in inches, change your grid so that it is shows inches. And that way it's really easy to just count these little squares. Um, I hope that helps there. Okay. So 
what I want to do here is I'm going to insert an embroidery here. So actually, I think I'm going to just stick my picture here so I can talk to you. So there is a difference between inserting a design and opening a design. So if you were to just go to say you've got your files of your embroidery design sitting in a folder on your desktop and you see one that you want to work on and you just open it, you just double click on it and that design is going to open up in your software. Your software opens, the design opens. Opening a design is opening up the original file. Inserting a design is opening up or inserting a copy of the original file. So I tend to always insert designs and I may not be alone here, but I still have an old version of software on my personal computer that I just haven't gotten around to taking it off yet. I don't need it, I don't use it, but every now and then I have an old design that I did in that software and I'll be looking into my files and think, oh, this is awesome, I need to open up the design and I'll open it and it will tell me I have to put my dongle in. Well, I don't use a dongle anymore. So that's because it's opening the original file. So if I, however, get my, my Sonet opened up as it is here on my screen and I insert that design, I have no problems opening it or you looking at it because I have just inserted a copy of that original design. I hope that makes sense. So I find that it's just safer all around to just insert a design rather than just open one. So we're going to go up here to insert files. And I happen to have open here the stitch files in my sample folder here. So I am going to find, where is it? This little iris here, and I'm going to choose it. You can click on it and then click open, or you can do a double click, whichever is easier for you to um, get that design in there or whatever you're used to. Um, let's see. Somebody says, I have got Premiere Plus 2 Ultra on Mac. Is this the same? There are a lot of very similar um, functions that we will be doing. Obviously, if you're used to your Mac, you know that there are things look a little bit different. Your screen looks a little bit different on the Mac, but a lot of the um, techniques, the functions and things will be very similar. So um, you should still be able to follow along. If um, knowing that there's uh, some Mac folks listening, I will try to remember to um, translate to Mac as much as I can. So, um, okay, so we have this design inserted here now. So um, what I want to talk about briefly now here is handles. So these little square boxes, the circles or the arrows here, let me zoom in a little bit. Down here on the bottom, you have a couple of ways to zoom. You can actually type in the percentage that you want to zoom. You can use the little slider bar or you can zoom to fit a rectangle. I tend to use this one the most. So I click that and I'm just going to draw a box around here and I can now see my design a little bit bigger on my screen. So hopefully you can see these handles a little bit bigger here. So when you see white handles, that means that you have a design that is ready to stitch. So it is set, it's ready to go, it is a stitchable design. You can make some changes to this one, um, but I'm gonna show you some other ways to do it instead. So the square handles on the outside are, you can use to make this design bigger or smaller. Um, you've got a four arrow cross cursor that is in the middle of the box here, and that is what's gonna help you move this around. The triangle handles that are on one on each side are your mirror image. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna mirror image up down. I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna mirror image side to side. Well, you can't really tell because it's fairly symmetrical, but you can see his bottom half there is shaking around a little bit. You also have this round one here that is gonna allow you to rotate this image, free rotate. 
So you do have here up on the home tab, the ability to rotate something 45 degree increments. So you can do that if you know specifically you want to rotate something that way. Maybe you're working on a quilt block and you're going to put a design on there and you've got half square triangles and you want one to be at a perfect 45 degree angle. So you can rotate it that way. Uh, one of the things that I love, and I know a lot of people maybe don't even know about this, but you've got a dot in the center as well. So if I hover over that dot, my four arrow cursor changes to just a plus. And I can move that circle wherever I want it. And now when I rotate, it's changed the pivot point. So that kind of gives you some options here as to how you are going to go ahead and rotate this. So um, that's a little something that not a lot of people know about. So I'm going to move that back into the center here. And I'm actually going to go back to regular size here. What I want to show you now is the difference between scale and resizing. So when you, we're going to change the size of this design. So if you look over here on the right to your design panel, we can see that this particular design has 1,896 stitches, has four colors, and is 53 by 44 millimeters, which is a, almost 2.1 inches by a little over one and a half inches wide. So you see if I hover over the millimeters, it's going to tell me the inches if I need that info. So if I just take my mouse and I hover over one of these corners and I drag this corner out, first of all, if I just drag it, it's going to be, I can change the size of it just a little bit crazily here. So I am going to now undo and get back to original size. You can undo by going up here to your quick access toolbar and hitting undo. You can right click and use the drop down box to undo here, or you can make things really easy and just use a keyboard shortcut and hit control Z. And that'll get, to back, back, get you back to where you were just control Z is a really easy keyboard shortcut to remember. And it's a lot easier than having to move your mouse up here. I, I always say I'm like a well-fed house cat. I'm a terrible mouser. If I can use my keyboard shortcuts, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts as often as I possibly can. So um, I want to resize this or scale it, keeping the proportions the same. So I am going to hold down control and shift at the same time. And now I'm gonna drag that corner box out. Now, before I let go, I want you to remember 1,896 stitches. Once I've scaled this, and you can see it's now a larger size, it still only has 1,896 stitches. So Scaling is not always a great idea. I believe the rule of thumb is you can scale up or down 20%. I just I don't personally like to scale at all. I I like to resize. Um, I think especially if something has been digitized and it's beautiful, it stitches out beautifully. I don't want to mess with the density of it here. So I'm going to control Z again. And now I'm going to go up here to my um, home tab. And I'm going to hit the resize button here. What it's going to do is it's going to change my handles from white to blue. So when you see blue handles, that means that this design is ready to be resized. Okay, so I'm going to hold down control shift again, and I'm going to find one of these corners. So remember 1896, I'm going to make this bigger. And now it's 8,049 stitches. And you can tell that it looks a lot better. So there are some designs that do better or worse, getting sized up a lot, getting sized up a little. Some of that is really just trial and error, um, at least in the beginning stages. Obviously, when you know a lot more and you are really good at setting up your um, designs and doing some digitizing, then you can make some changes with that. But for the most part, 
once you got those blue handles, you can resize um, pretty much with impunity. Okay, I'm gonna unclick that now and I'm gonna set this here. Um, do we have any, I'm gonna stop here and see if I've got any questions here. I see somebody who says my screen doesn't have the home view. I don't, I don't know that that's you. You baffled me on that one. I don't know why it wouldn't. Um, as long as you open it up, you should see at minimum the home screen, even if you have like the basic free version of the software will still have the home tab on it. Mm, I'm not sure about that one. Um, I still I still have Premiere on my computer. And once I finish the design, it shows up with the Premiere symbol instead of my Sonet. Do I need to delete Premiere from the computer? Yeah, that's probably exactly what's happening is it's just sort of defaulting to the Premiere. So if you open up my Sonet and you're using your designs in there, um, yeah, I mean, I need to do the same thing. I readily admit it. I need to just get it off my computer. So yeah, take it off your computer. You don't need it anymore. Um, when you open the iris, there were previews of the files. How? Okay, friends, am I still on here? Yes. You may need to download, when you download your sample files, the Explorer plugin, because I just had this issue myself. Um, normally, if you don't have that Explorer plugin, all of your designs are just going to be the MySonet logo, and you won't see any previews on there. If you download that Explorer plugin, that's going to allow you to see the all of the preview images of those files. So I think that's exactly what you're asking here. Um, I was told to resize using Modify Design. That has really worked for me. No reason why you can't. I mean, that's, that's fine. But this is just a really easy way to do it. Um, and again, you've there are some designs that aren't going to resize. If you've got a tiny, tiny little design, you're not going to be able to blow it up 2000%. It's just not going to look good. So that's when you're going to go into modify and make some changes that way. But for just basic, um, just basic stuff that you're doing here, just using this resize um, right here on the home tab should be absolutely fine for most of what you need to do. Okay, I want to get back to my screen here, screen only here. Okay, so what I want to do now here is um, take this design. I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller again. So I have room here. Unclick that. And I am going to um, just add a couple more. Excuse me while I take a drink here. So up here on your home screen again, you have your clipboard area. So when you bring a design here, um, there's one on, on your film strip here, just one design. And I want to make two of them. So I can do that a couple different ways. I can hit copy up here on my clipboard. What that does is it puts it over here on the clipboard. So if I want to insert it onto my canvas here, I'm going to paste. So I can paste, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> I can paste just a regular paste, control V as well as your keyboard shortcut, and it's going to paste it right on top of the one that's in there. If I paste in center, it's going to automatically paste it into the center of my hoop. So I tend to just use paste because I use, again, I use that keyboard shortcut and I just hit control V most of the time. So that's going to give you two designs here. Now, if I want to get rid of one of these designs, again, the software is always giving you multiple ways to do things. So I can come up here and I can hit delete. I can hit delete on my keyboard or I can right click and use the drop down box here to hit delete. Any of those ways will get you to get rid of that design. So you can also create a new image here by, again, selecting this design and duplicating it. Duplicate it is just going to give you, it's going to pop right up onto your canvas and it's just going to offset it a little bit so that you have another version here. Um, so I hope all of that makes sense um, as far as creating new 
images or replicating the one that you already have. And you can see now, once I have another one on here, um, it shows up in my film strip as well. And I can also use a keyboard shortcut and I can hit control D and that will also duplicate that design. I tend to use uh, duplicate more than copy just because I want it to pop right up onto my um, screen rather than just showing up in the clipboard and then I've got to go ahead and paste it as well. Um, I see somebody has asked, where do I find the Explorer plugin? It is right on the download page where you download your software, where you download your sample files. So uh, there's when you download your software, there's one one thing that will download the software itself. There are they I think it says optional downloads that will um, show you the sample files and the Explorer plugin. So if you go to your account and you um, hover over your picture, not the my dashboard, but the picture, it will bring up my account and it should be in there as well. Um, again, if you have questions about that, you can reference that my son at 101 that we did back in October because um, we talked a lot about how to find all those things on the website. Okay, so now that I have all of these things right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. I keep losing my cursor. I'm going to take one of these, uh, I think this one, and I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. And I think I'm going to change some colors on it as well. So in the design panel, in addition to the size information, you also have all of the colors of your design here. <coughs> Excuse me. You can, sorry, gang, I'm going to take another drink here. It's allergy season in Cleveland, so <clears throat> definitely feeling that, feeling that a little bit. So if I want to change the color of this iris, and I do, I'm going to hover over this color and I'm going to double click and it's going to bring me up my color selection window here. Now, the color selection window has a lot more than just changing colors on it. And honestly, this is probably something that could be part of a lesson all on its own. You can change things and say, for this color, I'm going to use puffy foam or for this color, I'm going to use a twin needle. You can do all sorts of really fancy, fun things here. You can change your design to a felting design, but we're not going to go over that today. <coughs> we're sticking with the basics. So you can change your thread ranges. I think we talked about that a little bit before. <clears throat> Meredith, how do I mute myself so I can cough? There it is. So sorry about that, folks. Okay. So you can choose the thread range that you want to use. So I tend to use um, Robeson, Anton, Rayon 40 is pretty much my default that I use most of the time, uh, Rayon 40. So that's the one that I use. You can change your quick colors here that are, have standard or themes for the time of year it is. I happen to have it set on spring. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a purplier color, Lori Lilac, and I'm going to hit OK. So now I've changed the color of this one image. Um, let's see here. Is there a reference document that has all the keyboard shortcuts? You know, I don't know. I don't think there is. Um, but if you notice when you hover over things here, it does show you with a keyboard shortcut. So change who control plus H, or if you're, you're on a Mac, Command, or um, Apple H. Um, I, I don't know about that. Um, I'll do a little research and I'll come back in the comments. And if I find one, I'll um, leave a PDF or a, you know, a link to that file. I don't know. I've never seen one before. Um, <laughs> okay, so somebody's asked a question about embroidering a logo. How do you get that logo? that is way beyond the scope of what we are doing today, but um, keep your eyes out. <laughs> we will probably have some stuff about that. Um, also look at um, Sonny did a three day beyond the basics back in August, I think of 2022, where she talked a bit about digitizing um, 
more in-depth digitizing than just the basics here. So um, take a look at that. Is a you might find some good info there, way beyond what we're doing today, but absolutely doable, for sure. Um, okay, so now we have three images here on our screen. So, and you can see them here on the film strip. What I'm going to do here is um, move some of these around just so that they are maybe a little bit closer together. So what I can do here is this next six section over here in the box is going to show you some um, selection options. So if I just want to select everything that's on the screen, I can go ahead and go to box select. And if I hit this little drop down arrow, it's going to show me some different ways that I can box my selection. So I can just hit box select, which is just creating a box come on, around my design. And it's going to select, in this case, everything. So I can also come here and just do a point select. So I may find, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, that I really come on, just want to select this iris. So I'm going to point select and I'm going to create some points here so that I can very carefully just select this. When I'm finished, I'm going to write, come on, point select. I didn't touch my last one. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to finish up. I'm going to right click. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Do I have it grouped? Regardless, I can do this here. Let me free it a little bit. There. I'm not sure why that's happening. I'm going to just move on. You can use your selection tools up here. Okay. You can also come over here and select each item in the film strip. One of the great things about the film strip is that I can just go ahead and click on the film strip and I don't have to worry about trying to freehand or point select when I'm, you know, if these designs are super close together or they're overlapping each other, you know, if I try to click on one of these other designs and they're all combined here, I'm not going to be able to get this one, but I can click here and there it is. And I can just move that one around however much I want to. So one of the things that also here is I can select all. So again, this is one that I tend to use a keyboard shortcut on. You can go up here and hit select all. Totally easy to do here. You can come up to your film strip and you can hit the first one, hold down shift and hit the last one. And that is going to select all of them. Or you can be like me, a well-fed house cat and just hit control A. And that's going to select everything. So when you select everything on your screen, <coughs> you get a box with orange handles around it. And that box has dotted lines on it. So this is really just a temporary grouping. So I've temporarily grouped these items together because I now want to maybe move them around, sort of treat them more as one item. If I wanna make this a permanent change, I can go up here and I can hit group. And now they are all grouped together as one design. And you can see that my um, the line around the box has turned solid. And up here in the film strip, everything is grouped together as one design. And you can see there's a little, some numbers up here that says one over three. So one design comprised of three items. Now, if I want to keep these items grouped together, um, but I want to see them, I still want to be able to change things individually. At the bottom of the film strip is a little um, icon here that is reveal groups. So if I hit that, it is now going to reveal each one. So I can see someone has asked, is there a way to separate them again after you've put them all in one box? Yep. So here's here is how I've done that. I've just revealed these groups. So now I can go and click on this one. And I can just go ahead and make some changes to this one part of that group. 
and then it doesn't affect anything else. So if I want to come in here now to this one that I've just selected <clears throat> and I want to change the color of it because I've decided I, I want a pink iris in there. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, that looks terrible. I somehow managed to change the same color. <laughs> I can't live with that. So we'll go with the purples or blues here and uh, change it to something outrageous. Okay. So if I want to do that, that's all I have to do is now reveal the group, select the one that I want to play with and make my changes. I can do the same thing here. I can do the same thing here. So if I want to, if I then now decide I don't really want all these things permanently grouped together, I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to hit ungroup. Or when I'm in the film strip here, I can type on this. You can see you've got some drop down arrows here and I can make changes that way. So now I've got three separate items again that I can just treat each one of these as completely individual items. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to now move these. I want to change the order of these. So see how I have this one is overlapping the big one. So maybe I really want this big one to be on top of the little designs. So I can come over here on the film strip and I can either drag these or I can use the arrows at the bottom. So what this is gonna do is move this big one down. So see how now, I hope you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit here. This leaf or petal is now on top of this, but it's still behind over here. So this is the stitch out order. So when you're rearranging things on the film strip here, you're rearranging the stitch out order so that in just cases like this, when you want things to overlap or specific things to be underneath something else. Okay, I am gonna move quickly right now. So I wanna go up to design player because I wanna see what this is gonna look like stitched out. So design player moves very slowly. So I'm gonna, fast forward through this. But what I want you to pay attention to is this area right here and right here. All right, play and let's fast forward here. It goes very slowly. So you're going to see when it stitches out that there are parts missing and they're missing because the software is smart enough to know that when you stitch this out, you don't want to stitch this entire petal and then have this entire petal on top of it again. Um, you want to remove that underlap. So you could do that here. In this little tool section, there is an option to combine and merge your designs. And I'm gonna tell you, I never combine my designs here. And that's because I'm going to save this design and I'm going to export it. And if any of you have ever talked to me about software before, you will know that this is my soapbox about saving and exporting your designs and how important it is to stay organized with that. So I set up my export so that it automatically removes the underlap and combines my designs for me upon export. So I don't need to do it to my saved designs here. Okay. So I think that's a good segue here now to go into the difference between save and save as. So remember at the beginning, we talked about uh, insert versus open. So save and save as is very similar. So when you have a design, you've brought in an original design and you've made changes to it. And you have said, here, I want to, I want to look at you guys again. Um, you have made changes to your original design. And you say, I don't need to worry about that original one that I had anymore. I will never use that again. You can just go ahead and save your design. Just save it. You're making permanent changes to that original design. When you save as, you are renaming that design. So you are saving another version of that file. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Mac folks, I believe you don't even have the option to save as, it's just rename. You rename your file and that will save it as a new file type there. So um, <coughs> I probably shouldn't have my face up here if I'm coughing. <coughs> Sorry, gang. 
Okay, so I tend to just automatically save as, and I figure if I want to get rid of one of my original files, I'll erase it from my folder. I use a bunch of different types of um, software and graphics programs where I've sort of just learned never delete or erase your original file because you never know if you're going to need it again. So um, I don't really erase anything. I like to just save new versions whenever I possibly can. So um, right now we're going to um, we're going to save as this file. So I'm going to go up here to my little quick access toolbar here, and I'm going to actually I think I'm going to go ahead and combine or just group all of these designs together, and I'm going to save as so. When I go here to save as here, let me get you to my desktop. I have saved on my desktop here some folders. I have my saved VP4 files. So no matter, <clears throat> I'm going to look at you all again, no matter what type of embroidery machine you are using, my Sonet is for everybody but all of your saved files are going to be in a VP4 format. So doesn't matter what kind of machine you're stitching on, you're gonna save your files as a VP4. So I'm just gonna change the name of this to Multi Iris, and I'm gonna choose my saved folder, and I'm gonna hit save. Okay, so it's gonna bring me back to this design now. <coughs> now, I'm gonna also wanna stitch this one out. So I can do that a couple of different ways. I can, if I have a My Sonet enabled machine, I can go up here to this little cloud up here on the right side, click on that and I can send it to my cloud. Or if I had my machine turned on, I could send it directly to my machine as well. But what you're most likely going to be doing is exporting your files. So when you export a file, you have the option now to export it in whatever file type your particular machine uses. So mine happened to use VP3 file. And now you can see this section here that says optimize for sewing. So this is what I was talking about that see it automatically, it's combining it, it's removing the overlap, color sorting, it's doing it for me. Um, because I've set it up that way. I've chosen these as my default and you can do that in the configure. Again, we talk about that a little bit in that my Sonet 101. I don't want to spend too much time on that um, today. So once I have chosen that, I know it's ready and I all I have to do is hit OK. It is going to bring this up and say it's showing me multi iris because that's what I just named it and exported. And then again, I am going to go to my exported VP3 files folder, and I'm gonna save it in here. Now these little icons, I just made them this rather than folders. That's just something that's on my computer, just for fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that and I'm gonna hit export. And that file now is in two places. Where is the export icon? Up here on the top left of the screen, there is a little floppy disk with an arrow coming out of it. I don't know if you're gonna, is there something covering that on the screen or is that just my screen? It's a little floppy disk with an arrow coming out of it here. I don't know if this will make a difference. I don't think so. Um, and that just says export. You can also use your keyboard shortcuts and just use control E to get that design exported if that's easier for you. Okay, so. I'm just gonna scoot this over for one second. This is where I keep these. I keep these things on my desktop because I know where they are at all times. There is one thing that I hear when I'm teaching people software lessons, it is I can never find my designs. I don't know where I put them. And, um, or I don't know what it's called, so I can't even search my computer for it because I've got a hundred designs somewhere that are all called untitled. So I can't express to you enough the importance of naming your designs and then saving them and exporting them in the same place always. You are creating for yourself a library of designs. 
So like any library, you need to have some kind of system, some kind of order in place. Okay, what I wanna do here, because I noticed we only have about 15 minutes left and that should be good. This should be just about what I need for uh, the next section here. I'm gonna go ahead and I've already got everything selected on here. So I'm gonna hit delete <coughs> and I'm gonna clean up my screen here. I'm gonna come over to the letter tab because we are gonna create a monogram. That is one of the things that I hear a lot that people just wanna create with their software. All I wanna do is learn how to make monograms or I wanna learn how to make um, labels for my quilts. We're not gonna have time to do a quilt label today but we will definitely be able to do a monogram. Now, if you have platinum, and it could be in gold as well, you will have a wizard that's a monogram wizard, and it's fantastic, it's a lot of fun, but you can do very similar types of things just using your letter tab and your frame tab. So I have chosen to use today this Bernhardt 15 to 35 millimeter font. I am gonna type in my initials, all in capital letters, because that's what I want them to be. And I'm gonna change the size of this to 35 millimeters. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through any of the rest of this except individual. I want to bring these designs in as uh, each of these letters as its own individual design. So I'm just gonna hit apply here. And you can see, because I typed all of them out together, it's grouped them, but you can see by the dotted line that it's a temporary group. But because I chose individual, I can see each individual item. So I'm gonna unclick here or deselect just by hitting outside the design. And so now I have three separate items that I can work on here. So just a quick thing about fonts. I'm gonna go down to the bottom here, just so you can see how they're labeled. So this Wild West one is a good example. It says Wild West Decor 2C UC 45 to 100 millimeters. So the 2C means that it is two colors. The UC means that it is uppercase only. And the 45 to 100 means that is the size between which you will get the best stitch out for these letters. Fonts are a little bit different than other designs that they are digitized pretty specifically to work within a, a specific size range. So you don't wanna veer too far off of the size that the font has been uh, pre-digitized. So um, I'm gonna change the order of these around a little bit. So I actually want K as my last name. So I, I really want that one to be in the center. So because I wanna make sure that it's actually getting centered, I'm just gonna go over to the home tab and I'm gonna hit center in the hoop. And then I'm gonna go back to the letter tab here. So I know that that is perfectly centered in the hoop for now at least. And I'm just gonna kind of move these over a little bit because I'm gonna play with the K first. So one of the things that I absolutely love about these fonts here is how much I can play with them. I'm not stuck <clears throat> with just this shape. So there is this little, what looks like a, I call it the legal pad. It's a little yellow legal pad next to the, and I'm sure there's probably a real name for it. And I'm sure somebody will correct me, but I like the legal pad. I click on this and it's going to show me all of these different options, things that I can do to these letters to make them look different. So I'm going to start with this one by making sure that match top and bottom lines is selected. So it's green here. And I'm going to choose a curve. So when I do that, what it does is it gives me two extra handles. And you'll notice here that the handles are green. Now, green handles mean essentially that this is a design that has been created in the software, and it is available right now to be digitized. So you'll find that when you're playing with super designs, those all come in as green. That means I don't have to worry about going and clicking on resize if I wanna change the size of it. Um, I just can go ahead and make changes as long as it's got that green, the green handles on it, ready to be digitized. So what I can do with this now is I can move these and I can change the shape of these letters until they're just a little bit more interesting to me. So it looks a little bit more monogrammy. 
I can also go in here and this is, these are super fun to play with. So a constraint here is just basically means it's, you are limited to the shape that it's going to give you. So I'm going to click on pennant and I'm going to click on the, the corner that I would normally use to change the size. And when I do that, it's changing the size, but see how it's creating a pennant, but it's also doing it in the shape of that design. I think these are so cool. You can really have a lot of fun with these. Oh, it's called the status icon or hamburger icon, right? Collapse menu, the hamburger. Right. Yes. Legal pad. I mean, all of these are just sort of fun names here. So um, so I'm going to do that with this design. Just going to make it a little bit bigger here and I'm going to get rid of that. So that is just one design here. So I'm going to come over here now and I'm going to select this one. And I don't want the top and bottom to match this time. So I'm going to unclick that, make sure that it is not selected. And I'm going to go ahead and do a curve just on the top. So I'm going to change the shape of this one here, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to deselect match top and bottom. I'm going to go to the curve, and I'm going to pull this up here as well. And I'm not I'm not too worried for this sample here in the time we have to get things perfect. I'm just move these a little bit closer. Okay, so now I've just made some changes here, and now I'm going to zoom in a little bit because this is the reason that I chose this font. I love a satin column font for this reason. I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to bring up my um, options here and I'm going to click on satin column. Satin column is going to bring up and I wish I could remember how many of these there are. Sorry, I'm choking again. I want to say 200 some different satin designs that I can switch out. So this, all of these different options that you have here to create completely new looking designs. I'm going to choose waves here and I'm just going to click OK. And then you can see that now this design has that cool pattern on it. Love it. So now I'm going to do the same thing on R. I'm going to go over here. And I think I'll choose a different one just for grins. <clears throat> How about this one, 244? And I'm gonna come over here, do the same thing. And this one, I know I wanna use 244, so I'm just gonna type that one in here. And there we go, I have changed this. Awesome, I love it, it's so much fun. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a frame around this design here. And I'm going to go into my frame tab. <clears throat> Again, you've got so many, so many different frames to choose from. And one of the really great things that I love so much about my Sonet is that silver, gold, platinum, all of these paid for versions, not the basic free one, you get every font, every super design, every frame. And it used to be that only the ultra versions had that. So it's really nice. You have so much that you can do with these different softwares here. Okay, let's go ahead. And I think I want to use, yeah, this candle wicking shield. So I'm going to choose that as my frame. Now, right now, I have no design selected on my screen. So if I just take this candle wicking frame, I hit apply, it's going to come in and it is going to, as soon as it does that, fill up the entire screen. So I don't really want that. Now it does have green handles on it. I could change that. I could change the size of it quite easily, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna, I wanna select all of these. So again, keyboard shortcut, control A is going to allow you to select everything that's on your screen. And now I have this little group checked so that when I hit apply and that frame comes in, it's going to come around and fit that design. And you can see here in the film strip that it's grouped everything together. So I'm gonna reveal groups here because I wanna be able to just make a few little tweaks on the frame itself. So I maybe wanna move it down a little bit and you know, it is just a tick too big for me. So I'm gonna just shrink that a little bit. Okay. 
So we got that. All right, so that is a pretty simple, basic monogram here. But I think I don't, I don't think I like this one. I think I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna really, I wanna do an applique. So same thing, I wanna make sure that I've got the entire group selected. Now, because I've already grouped these things together, all I have to do is click on the film strip and it's gonna select everything for me. So I'm gonna click apply and it's gonna bring this in again as a new group, reveal groups. And I'm gonna click the, this one's already selected for me. So I'm just gonna move this around a little bit, maybe change the size. There, so that's a pretty a pretty basic looking little um, little monogram there. But you can see that you can do so much with those. So let me bring my face up here so I can talk to you again. So I have some other questions here. Somebody's asking, "What is a super design?" So I've got a few minutes here, so I'm going to use them. Sorry, Meredith and Ryan. So super designs here are this whole selection. I'm going to click all this big selection of designs that are basically ready to be digitized, changed around. You can do a whole lot with them. So you can bring bring in your little digitized design or your super design here. It automatically comes in with a green, um, with green handles around it. Let us, let's delete this. It has green handles in it, so you can automatically, so if you look, 68, 47 of the stitches on here. If I make this bigger, it's automatically going to maintain the density here of this design. So there are so many super designs. There are frames in here. There are buttonholes, all sorts of really great stuff. Um, so definitely play with them a lot. Uh, I have another question here. When you print out the thread color order, how do you change the font size of that? Mine prints out very tiny, about four point. Mm, print out the thread color order. Oh, um, gosh, I, I so very rarely print things. Um, it might, honestly, it might be a setting more on your computer printer interface than it is in here. Let me do a little sleuthing for you on that and see if I can find out um, an actual answer rather than me just guessing here. So um, if we don't have any more questions, um, I think we'll leave it at that for now. I really hope that this was helpful for you. I'm going to move back to my, oops, that's not what I want. This is the one I want. Okay, I'm gonna move back to my full screen here um, so I can say thank you so much for spending some of your day here with me. Um, I hope that you um, got something out of this that it maybe reminded you of some things you didn't know about before, or that you feel a little bit more confident about getting into your software and starting to play. Just remember to play. One of the most important things you can do is just give yourself some time to make mistakes. If you only open up your software when you have a deadline, you are only gonna get frustrated and you are not gonna take the time to learn anything because you got that deadline breathing down the back of your neck. So, you know, instead of mindlessly scrolling through your phone for a half an hour every night, open up your software, play, just put in some super designs, play around with some of the different things that you can do with the lettering. Um, just give yourself the time to play with it. You, you can't really, you can't really make mistakes when you're um, just playing around because you've always got the undo option. Uh, you've got the option to just clear the screen and delete everything. Doesn't matter. So give yourself that time to play. Um, oh, Meredith left me a little note on here that says, when you select your printing, you're gonna see an option to make sure that you're printing at 100%. Um, and I think that's rather than like fit to page, uh, and maybe you're like tiling those pages. So, but we'll do a little bit of looking around for you on that. Um, oh, she says, correct. Okay. Um, I want to also remind you all that the next MySonet Live is going to be on Wednesday, April 12th at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. And that is going to be with the wonderful Kathy from what Kathy doesn't know about software probably isn't worth knowing. She's been working with the software for years and years and years. Uh, she knows so much. She is going to be specifically talking about modify and um, doing um, 
let me right click here and see if I can remember what it's called. Nope. She's editing. So she's going to be editing and doing editing and modifying. So stitch editor. Oh, I knew those words would come. Stitch editor and modify. So you will learn so much from her. So I hope that you can um, make it to that again, Wednesday, April 12th, 2 p.m. Central time. See you next time. I hope you all can make it. Thanks for coming today. Bye.